Hi, I'm going to show you how we can use Amazon EKS Managed Kubernetes Service along with a few other AWS services to implement some well-architected operational excellence in your Python web application when you develop QA test and deploy the application to production. So let's get started. I've already set up a EKS Kubernetes cluster. So if I go to the command line here on my AWS jump box, cluster info, I can see that that's the Kubernetes master um, running at that location. And similarly, if I want to figure out what worker nodes I have, I can simply say kubectl get nodes. And there you have it. I have a couple of worker nodes on which we can run pods or containers. Now, in order to use my Kubernetes cluster effectively, I have made a couple of virtual clusters within this Kubernetes cluster. So I have two namespaces. I have um, the development namespace and I can see what pods are running there and you can see we are running three pods two application server pods Django pods and a third one is a pod running Postgres, uh, my test database in development. And further, I can see what services are exposed uh, in this virtual Kubernetes cluster. And here I can see there's a load balancer. So this particular endpoint here corresponds to where I can see um, uh, the, the Django web application and there is also PG host which actually um, connects to this Postgres container which I showed you earlier. Now let's look at the other namespace I have so I have a production namespace so let's go and switch over to that context. Let's see what pods I have here. So here I have only two pods and these are the application servers. Uh, however, if I look at the services, you see that I have the uh, Django service, of course, uh, just like I had with development at this endpoint. But I also have a PG host, the same name as here. But now this is an external name and it just points to the uh, RDS instance of Postgres that is running within AWS and hosting my production database. So for production, I take advantage of the AWS RDS service, but for development, I simply use a pod within the Kubernetes um, cluster itself. All right, great. So. Um, one of the key tenets of um, operational excellence um, in the AWS well-architected framework is automating everything with code where possible. And this includes the deployment pipeline, which includes development, uh, test, as well as um, promoting to master. So what I'm going to show you in this demo is that I have a Jenkins instance right here. And within the Jenkins instance, I have several pipelines. So there's pipeline one, which is the developer workflow, where you build and unit test your code. Then there is the second pipeline, which is the QA pipeline, which is integration and acceptance testing. And creating a release candidate to be released into production. And then there is a production release pipeline, which will actually put out new code into production. 
as well as there are a few smaller pipelines which can be used to roll back a release, scale an application as in the number of pods which are running in production and so on and so forth. So let's just go ahead and uh, have a quick look at what this application is. So here is um, the development endpoint which is being shown in this browser window and right now you see it has a yellow background now this is a simple Django application with a database application server and then of course a load balancer and uh, similarly here is the the production endpoint and right now production and development both have this yellow background now let's say that I as a developer want to change this background to a different color so I'm going to make a code change and push it into the development branch and then we're going to use those Jenkins pipelines to promote the code from development to QA to production. And we'll also do a rollback at the end and see how all that works with, um, uh, with what we have here. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a change to the um, HTML template which renders that web page that you saw. So we're going to get into the poll application. the base or HTML and as you can see it's yellow right now and I want to make it um, some other color let's make it um, let's say cyan All right and then I'm going to save that and um, let me check what branch I'm on I'm on the development branch so git pull in case there are any changes in the development branch uh, all the code is being hosted in AWS code commit which helps you um, practice good source control management practices in the organization. Now, let come in the code. All right, and I'm going to push this back into my development branch in code commit. So now I'll go back to Jenkins and I'm going to first want to test my code change so I have this um, Jenkins pipeline the developer workflow which I will kick off and what this does is it uh, checks out that source code it builds the new docker image with that source code and uh, then it deploys and runs unit tests and um, and then if everything's fine there's a developer sign off which means this pipeline uh, remains green from end to end and um, while I'm doing that let me show you what a pipeline looks like this so this is the the uh, code which defines that Jenkins pipeline so there's uh, a st uh, several stages in here for example there's a docker build stage and then there is the um, stage where we actually uh, replace the old containers or the old pods in Kubernetes with the new uh, Docker uh, image uh, pods. And then we can run unit tests. Now, of course, in this case, it's just uh, uh, an echo command, but here we would run unit tests in real life. And then if everything goes okay, you can run some tests, some JUnit tests in this um, shell script here and declare the unit test as passing. All right, so let's go and see. So Jenkins says that it has been able to successfully run the pipeline. And if I go back to my dashboard, the code um, is now ready to be promoted. So now you might have a QA or a test team which comes in and does integration and acceptance testing and these guys basically cut a release candidate branch off the uh, development branch uh, run their end-to-end uh, -end testing and then they release the code into the master branch so let's go through their workflow 
their pipeline. And I'm showing you this stuff as three separate pipelines, one after the other, but there's no reason why they cannot be all connected into a long pipeline with um, perhaps um, uh, human clickable uh, accept or reject buttons to, to make this almost like a CI CD setup. And there you go, the QA team has signed off. And now it's up to the operations team to release the code. So, so let's see. So now in development, I have the cyan background, whereas in production, I still have the yellow background, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build the production release which is actually going to deploy the new code and the new container images into production okay and this takes a while to replace the containers in production and we will see that in a bit still yellow while our Jenkins job is completing. Alright, so this says that the new code has now been deployed to production. So let's go to the production endpoint which is still yellow and let's refresh the page. And there you go, it's become sign. So we've been able to push that code into production. Now Let's just say that we find that there's a regression in the code. We don't like this signed release. So Ops decides to roll back the release to a previous version. So I can just click on Build Now and uh, Kubernetes will roll back to the previous version and we should see the yellow background again. And one of the underlying themes here is automating stuff so that you can define your process as code like these pipelines here and make sure that you're able to adhere to standard practices when you are doing your deployments your rollbacks and so on and so forth so this says that i've rolled back so now let me re refresh the the production page and sure enough it's become yellow again there are other things you can do for example there is a there is a pipeline which would let you um, actually scale the, uh, the the number of containers so right now we have two two pods so let me show you here ptl get pods in the namespace of production you can see there are two pods running however maybe I want more than two pods right so if I run this with parameters and number of replicas let's make it four and I say build hopefully we will see that Kubernetes has scaled up the number of replicas to four Right. And then let's see what's happening here. Ah, there you go. Now you have four pods instead of two. So here I've shown you a whole demonstration of how you can bring about this automation in your CI CD pipeline to move an application from development to production across different teams and increase the amount of automation that is used to deploy your applications. Thank you.